I worked for AMC on another television show, and I had been working for them for years, and the show was ending, and I was at a wrap party for that show. Uh, it was called Hell on Wheels, and one of our creative executives, a woman named Emma Miller, who's phenomenal, uh, asked me if I had read Nosferatu by Joe Hill, and I had not, truthfully, but I had read Lock and Key and was a big fan of Joe's work on that, so I said, I'm happy to read it. And she said, check it out. We have the rights to it. We think it would make a good TV show. Uh, and I read it that weekend and concurred. I loved it. And so I called her on Monday and I said, I love this book. Um, sign me up. And we went from there. I had a conversation with Jamie. Uh, I read six of the scripts. Um, and I just felt like there was a lot of dimension in the world and there was a lot of great collaborative energy around the project. Um, I had a call with Kari Skogland, who was directing the first two episodes. Um, and then, you know, for me, the aspect of this character that allowed me to really transform and immerse myself in um, another physicality and another kind of world was ultimately more appealing than, uh, than not. And so, I decided to come on board and then I read the novel and then I was even happier that I came on board and, and then I read the graphic novel, The Wraith, which is much more about Charlie Manx's backstory and there's just, there's so much, um, there's so much fabric here to, to work with um, creatively that I felt like, um, I felt like it would be a missed opportunity. Um, and also, you know, I haven't been on TV in five years actually and so there was a part of my decision that was like, well, let me, if I'm going to come back to television, let me come back and do something that I know people like to see me do. Um, that was also part of it, you know, but to do it on another level, you know, with a little bit more, I think, um, depth and nuance. And, you know, the thing I love about this show is that it exists both in the supernatural world, but also very firmly in the real world. And uh, Ashley's character exists in this really um, kind of grounded, emotional um, world where she's struggling to define herself and, and uh, accept herself and uh, I really like that aspect of it too so that it was it was operating on a spectrum rather than just in one one area I think the um, the complexity and the deep psychology that was explored in the book and then also in the adaptation uh, that was really strong and um, appealing to me. I, I really appreciated that it was sort of a reimagining of the, the heroine story in a sense that I think recently we've seen this kind of rise of films which portray really strong female characters, um, superheroes and women who are kind of badass and so on. And um, I really enjoyed that Vic was all those things, but she was also very vulnerable um, and her superpowers were her empathy, her creativity, her vulnerability, uh, her sensitivity. And um, I just really enjoyed that we're kind of broadening the scope of the term strong to include these typically feminine qualities, which is what makes her the superhero she is. But she's also simultaneously a very ordinary girl in challenging circumstances, which is kind of what births this uh, superpower in a sense, the turmoil. Where I started was as a fan. Um, I just really loved the book and was um, completely captivated by the characters and this really interesting world that Joe Hill had created. And so I just thought to myself, um, what is the best way to squeeze as much of this onto a TV screen as we possibly can? And so uh, whenever we've kind of deviated from the book, uh, it has, I hope, really, the goal has been it to, in order to serve the book. I so, reckon it has. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you're welcome. You, Ashley. <laughs> um, and the example that I give a lot is that when we, when we first meet Vic McQueen in the book, she's eight years old. And the first time she encounters Charlie Manx, she's a relatively, she's a pretty young teenager. And then um, she encounters him again later as an adult. Uh, that portion of the book 
is amazing, I think. Mm -hmm. I, the whole book is great. Um, so when, we went, when I set about adapting it, I thought, you know, we're going to have an adult actress play this role, but I don't want to lose any of this stuff. And I also don't want to see it as a flashback with a different actress who the audience mm -hmm. isn't going to know as well. And so I thought, let's just make her a little bit older so that we can take that journey with our mm -hmm. Vic. Um, and, you know, so th those are the kinds of decisions that we made. But really, I made that decision w wanting to not lose the childhood story, yeah. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. It gives me a lot of anxiety, I'll be completely <laughs> honest. Um, yeah, because I think that Joe rightfully has a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. The book is fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, I think that people, you know, I know that when I love a book and I'm going to watch an adaptation of it, I go in with a hope of I hope that they do it justice. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, absolutely, it's anxiety provoking. Um, but I think that we've been really lucky in that Joe has been so supportive of the project and really generous. And um, honestly, I, I think he's kind of getting a kick out of it. He enjoy, <laughs> he, like he's come to set, he's yeah. come w with us. He was at WonderCon with us. And um, I think that that has his kind of saying, I'm with it. I think has yeah. allayed whatever fears fans have, or at least I hope it has. I think you also can't, you know, I've had a lot of experience managing fan expectations in my career and I feel like you just can't please everybody <laughs> and you know our job is to do the best work we can and to honor the project that we're taking on in whatever way we can and that's, that's our contribution and hopefully people come on board and respond to it and you know, uh, my experience so far with the fan base is that, you know, they've been really excited about what we've done, but we just have to do our work, you know, and that's, um, that's sometimes difficult, but mostly, you know, you just show up and commit to what is right in front of you, and it adds up to an experience that hopefully people can get on board with, and so far they seem to be. Yeah, yeah because I think the book exists in its own right, and it's kind of perfect in its own sense and we're, this is a completely new medium it has its own life it has its own uh th this medium has its own properties that allow for other grooves to be deepened and explored and so it's it's you know it's just a different way of sharing similar things or exploring it further or um you know it's just a, it's a different version entirely so it's, you don't want to be kind of limited by trying to create the exact same thing yeah. that previously existed in a wonderful form in and of itself. But it's definitely informed um, a lot of my choices as a character and so on. But there's, you know, there, there are still fears because, you, as you said, you do want to do it justice and you want to honor mm -hmm. the stories and the characters that are within. Yeah. Mm -hmm.